Hey Q2C, welcome back to another uh, gameplay footage. This time from inside the lost, the last city known as Zenith. So uh, we're gonna do a little kind of a tutorial for all the new people. Show them around the starting area, around the town where you can find different things. Um, and we'll see what happens. Let's head back over to where the main city is. Which is just around the corner here and over the bridge. Let me shoot these guys in my back. Do the magic. So this is item drops or loot that you get from killing things. These little gold pieces down here. This is in-game currency. So I just got five Zenith tokens for each one of those little gold pieces that came down. This is loot. And you can read the description to see what it is. You grab it with your hand, with the grip button, either hand, and jam it into your chest in order to put it into your inventory. I'll show you those. These here are community chests, and they're found all over the place, full of loot. You have to hit them or shoot them for them to open. If you had a sword, you would smack it. And you get different items. So I got a broken mask, some dancing sparks, and some dust. And some gold pieces here, which is Zenith in-game currency. And you just grab e any one of the items put it on your chest, and they'll all come into your chest for you. We're gonna run into town. And uh, check out this massive city. It is absolutely huge. And there's a bunch of pieces and parts of this city that are blocked. Uh, ready for future updates and Download content, new new additions to the game. Things like that. All right, so give it a second for this all to render in. Let's turn the camera around. There we go. So throughout the city, you'll find these boxes. These little machines. And these are out, out and about in the world as well. They're not just here. But to use these machines, you come up to them and it shows you all the inventory that you have, whether you're carrying it on your person or in your inventory slots. And then you can pick items from this list. So let's let's pick my level eight cloak. It adds it to the inside of the terminal and down on the bottom here, it shows me what I need to upgrade. So I need 15, basic enhancement dust and those are the items that you get from those chests and from killing bad guys and it's going to give me looks like plus one to my primary stat if i upgrade it so you pick a piece of, it, of uh, inventory whether it's a weapon or a piece of clothes or whatever pull a little handle and it upgrades if I had enough dust, it says I have insufficient dust. You can see down here, I've only got 10, 10 uh, none of the rare stuff, none of the the magic stuff. I don't have any of those. And I've only got 10 of the common ones, so I can't do it right now. I'll have to wait and get some more dust. But the button is how it works. You just jam that down and you're off to the races. This is the cooking area. From here, um, you can get daily and a whole quest line of cooking quests from the chef. 
And as you unlock them, as you level up, more and more quests will become available. So right now, I need to be level 12 before I can get the next ones. And as you as you move along, there's a whole whole series of them. If you need any items for cooking, these items are bought at this terminal, which is the general store. Let's see if I can move the camera back. So this general store, you just click on it to open. All the different ingredients that you can buy. There's a basic noodle recipe. I don't have, excuse me, I don't have that. I'm gonna buy that. Uh, but then you can flour, oranges if you can't find any, sugar, milk, and there'll be other recipes and stuff that you could buy as well. Go to the next screen and it's a selling screen. So this is all the inventory items that I'm not currently wearing. And you can just click on them. You can hover over them to tell it what it is, level six common. Click on it, it adds it over to the window on the right. I'm gonna sell all that stuff. And then the down on the bottom on the right, you've got a sell button. There you go, I sold all that stuff that was in my inventory. You can repair items if they're damaged. And then back to the buy screen. So let's uh, go up here. We'll show you a few things up here. So up here is a good place for you to do cooking, uh, manage your inventory. There, there's not a lot of action going on up here, but there is some important stations up here. So on this side, we'll flip you around. Right here is a uh, another one of those upgrade terminals. Like I said, they're all over the city. So you, this is where you can upgrade the stats of weapons and armor and things like that. And on this side is a couple stations that are used to create uncommon loot that you can't find in the world. So you can go to these items. Like this is a level 40 crafting station. So you can pick any of the items that you want if you want this whole series of clothes. They look pretty badass. And here on the right, it shows you the ingredient list that is required in order for you to create that item. So I need 45 stardust, 45 or 65 stardust, 45 fire things. I don't even know what those ones are. And looks like 55 pearls. Plus 5,000 zen, which is the in-game currency. Let's see if this machine is, this is, this, oh, this one's Squire's Garb, so a little different. And you can change the class, so if you want to see what the warrior would get, you can change it versus the mage. Uh, what else can we show you in town? I think that's about, I think that's about it for now. So when you come out into the quest world, or into the world itself, uh, you'll be introduced to Mika again. She's right at the end of the bridge. She'll have your first set of starting quests. And the quests are things like go and kill a bunch of these guys and get some horns. Go um, find some panda owl statues. Over here, agent. They're quests to kind of just get you agents. to get out in the world and start exploring. Um, here, I'll give you a little quick tour on some gathering skills. So, you'll find a lot of these trees with these or, or these uh, kind of like umbrella leaves at the top. Um, I call them umbrella trees. I don't know what they're what they're called, but they're easy to pick out when you're looking far into the distance. These trees have fruit hanging from them or fruit in them. And these ones have oranges. So you can pick the oranges from the trees. There's some up, there's one way up there in the tree. You just stick them in your chest to add them to your inventory. And you don't have to be super close. I think I'm a little too far away down here. Yeah. So if you can't reach it, you gotta climb the tree. And then you can reach and force pull the orange.
All right, what can I show you up in the sky? So that, let me see if we can move your camera a little bit. Up there, you should be able to see a big red beam in the sky. That red beam is a world event. Uh, world events happen all over the place. Anyone can take part and anyone can help defeat them. As you can see, there's someone doing it right now. So let's go help. Event complete, 13,000 experience. That was quick. Over here, hiding in a rock, or in a little uh, tree here, is a chest. More items, we can test the, uh, what I was telling you about the force pull. I'm still too far away, there we go. And here comes my Zen coins. I got 71 Zen coins out of that chest. That's all right. And here's a garden. These items down here on the ground, which I think you can see. These are, um, I can't remember what this root is, but you force pull to pull it out. These will be chopped up to use in like uh, noodle recipes and different types of food that you can cook. So every time you see these, kind of pick them up. It'll help in the long run because you're going to need them. There's a loot piece that I left. What is this one? Okay, so this one shows me this one's guardian shoe. And here is another little root vegetable. Oh, and there's a ton of them over here. So many. And then this is an umbrella tree. So there's a bunch of oranges up in this tree. Hmm. Someone left one. Oh, see here, I can reach that one. Dunk. And I can pull the orange down. And you can even eat these. They'll give you plus six health for about five seconds. So if you're really in a bind, you can just eat an orange if you don't have any actually cooked food ready for you. I think, oh, there's another one. All right. All right, so this is another, uh, just happened in my, in my headset here, so I'm gonna show you what this means. At the bottom of your screen right here, you have your number. Actually, you know what? Let's switch cameras so that you can see what I'm seeing. So now you should be able to see through my eyes. So down here, you can see my, my level, my abilities that I've got selected, my travel abilities over on the left. So this is my... my, my uh, Mage jump, whatever the hell that's called. Um, and this below my uh, level is a yellow bar. If I jump, the yellow bar goes away. If I jump again, it goes away even more. This is your stamina. And as you stand still, the stamina builds up and replenishes. If you fly, the stamina drops quite quickly. If it gets too low, your eyes turn yellow. You see that yellow around my face? And there it goes because my stamina builds up again. The yellow will turn to red and then you'll fall from the sky. So let's, uh, let's climb up here. Ooh. 
Let's just get up on top of this building. And we're just gonna fly back to that garden and watch the stamina bar. I'll even jump so it uses some more. So there it's turning orange. Now my eyes are turning yellow and I'm out and you fall. So as a new character, your health is pretty low. I have got quite a lot of health, but at, you know, I, I lost 150 or something. If you fell from quite high, that would probably kill you. <laughs> so keep that in mind. When your screen starts to turn yellow, you're running out of stamina. So uh, figure out how to correct yourself. And there's things you can do. So if we get back up here, if I jump again, just to burn off some of my stamina, you can put your arms beside you and then out and then in and then out and then in to kind of fall in steps till you get closer to the ground so that you don't hurt yourself. That's kind of the easiest way I've figured out to not take too much damage when you drop out of the sky. I haven't been in this house, so I want to check to see if there's a chest up here. There is not. It's a cool little house, though. I'm hoping they uh, add player housing and things like that. I might just claim this as my home. In the starting zone. So many players and people and things wandering around. I've got my in-game mics and stuff turned off, so I can't hear them. But uh, normally, there's all kinds of conversations going on, people needing help. So the menu system, wrong button, is left Oculus button brings up this giant menu system at the bottom. The first one is your inventory. So these are items that I'm currently carrying. These can be dragged wherever you want, if you want to organize things. Um, quest related items, these are the items that are used in those crafting stations to create new items. So these are like uh, components required for upgrades. And any uh, quest related, if you're on a quest that says I need five of these keys, those will be dumped into the quest section of your inventory. So they don't take up space in your normal inventory, which is handy because this fills up pretty quick. Um, these little books, you can grab these books out of your inventory if you get them. These are a recipe for a food um, item. What else can we do on here? This is your godstones. Godstones are your abilities. And this is the movement or the, uh, the gesture or movement or whatever it is that you need to do to, create, to cast that godstone or that ability. So as a mage, I want to cast this little lightning thing. That's this lightning strike, so my gesture is down. I can switch it to a boulder drop. My downward swing is a giant boulder drop. I prefer the lightning strike. Uh, same goes for this one down here, my trigger. My right hand trigger is a fireball, which I like. I could switch that to a snowball. And instead of doing damage, that one is a movement impairing. It slows enemies. Uh, but from the Godstone screen, this is where you have the ability to change up whatever it is that you can do. This is where you can also change from DPS to tank to healer. So if I wanted to go to a tank class, I'm now level one because I've never tanked before. I have new abilities. I don't have any gear, because all my gear is for high level stuff. Level 8, level 5, level 6, level 13. So <laughs> none of it can be worn, because I switched. Uh, the, cook the cauldron is the cooking station. These are all the recipes that I've learned. Click on the recipe, tells you what it is you need. Noodles, I need flour. So this is milk and oranges to make a creamsicle smoothie milk, sugar, and flour to make cookies. So the only thing I have ingredients for at the moment are enough for smoothies because I have only one milk on me. You have to go back into town, talk to that guy, the cooking dude, and he will give you milk or sell you milk. So let's show you how the cooking station works. 
toggle that cooking station on, and now I have my own cooking station. Everyone can see this cooking station if they came up here, but nobody can use it but you. You select the recipe on the right on the left side. So I'm going to select my creamsicle recipe. It tells you exactly how to cook this, what you need, and what it'll do. So this one does plus 10% rage for a smoothie. These effects from these items are stackable, so you can eat a cookie and drink a creamsicle, and you'll get all of the the, uh, the things. So I'll get plus 25 health, plus 5 attack, plus 5 defense, and plus 10% rage. So what's it say? Cook milk in the pot, then place it in the cauldron. So we need milk in the pot. This is the power for the stove. Push that in. Now when you cook, you have to line up this line the whole time it's cooking or it will burn. And this goes in the cauldron. Then it says chop blood oranges into seven pieces, then place it into the cauldron two times. So that means I need two oranges. Here's one. And two. And there is my creamsicle. Uh, but you can jam it into your chest, keep it in your inventory, and you're good to go. And now you can see I'm out of milk, so I can't make any more of my my current items. So to get rid of the station, uh, this particular uh, power source is free. It renews all the time. Uh, these ones cost money, so this is 500 Zen tokens, but it lasts quite a bit longer. So you can cook multiple items uh, quite quite easily with this one, but you have to buy it. And you buy it right here. If I picked that up and jammed it in there, it would take off 500 tokens or 500 of my Zen credits, and I could use the stove for, I, I think it's like three or four times longer. You can cook quite a bit of stuff with the second upgrade. This pro tier, once you do more of the quest line, it'll open up and it does even, it's more expensive, but does more. And like I said, these ones, it just comes back. So you, if you don't mind just jamming them in all the time, then you can just use the free one. So next on the list is the people button. This is your social screen where you'll find your friends, party members, if you're in a party, to join a party, you just click, if they're online, these guys are all offline right now. They'll show up under online. If they're online, you just click party and they come into your party. If you're the guild master, you'll have these guild buttons like I have. And you can just click on the guild button and they'll join your guild. Uh, they'll be prompted to join your party, prompted to join your guild. Next button is the guild button. So here you can see all the members of the QTC Virtual Strangers Guild. We have eight members so far and we just started this yesterday. So that's awesome. Uh, and from here you can promote members, demote members, kick members if you don't want them in your guild anymore, things like that. The next button is the map. The world map opens up as you progress through the game. Uh, a couple little tips. These are quests. Story quest is available there. These are uh, trunks chests and stuff that you found in the past. This is actually, I think, uh, side quest stuff. Like, here's a side quest available marker, these little guys. These are world events that are happening. This one happens in 4 minutes and 22 seconds, 7 and a half minutes, in 2 minutes, probably right now. Yeah, this one happens quite often, so it's probably happening right now. This one up here, this little shopping cart, that is the store that we were at where we were buying our ingredients. These are fast travel points they'll upgrade or they'll unlock as you uh, progress through the world it'll be filled with them uh, I think of it as the Griffin from World of Warcraft or whatever easy ways to quickly get throughout the world like I have quests down here it would take me half an hour to run down there um, this one here is Brim's Tavern this is kind of just a social space all your weapons and abilities are removed here uh, but you can go and hang out with your friends and this is the underside. The underside is where you first come into the game. 
that is the very, very first starting zone, kind of down below before you take the portal up into the into the main city. Uh, but there, there's the map. It's enormous. This is only the one section, right? Like this is just the one road out of the main city that's open. This way is closed, this way is closed, and this way is closed. So there is boatloads of room for upgrades and new content, which is awesome. Uh, region mode, you can go to this, and it gives you a zoomed-in version of the mini-map, or of the giant map. And, of course, you can navigate from this. I think you can even drag it around. And zoom in or zoom out if you want to really try and figure out where you need to go. Like this quest marker, for example. This is a side quest for uh, collecting tiers. I don't see any tiers around here. But they hide in things like that rock over there. You'll see a big blue tear drop kind of hanging from the sky. Sometimes they, dro they hang from these. And you got to figure out how to get up there to get it. I know on the other side of this rock, there's one hanging from a from a big crystal that I haven't got yet. But anyway, that's the quest for her. And she's uh, kind of a statue that's hidden in this area of the map. Um... That's pretty much the world map. This is your quest journal, where you can see the storylines quests that you've completed. Adventure quests, any group quests that you're on or finished. The hunt, so you can see these quests are white because I am currently doing those. The check mark shows whether or not you want them to be tracked on your arm. So if I take the check mark out for exiles, They'll disappear from my list. Doesn't mean I'm not on the quest, just means I don't want to see it. If you didn't want to do the quest, you could click on it, and then click Abandon, and it will dump the quest out of your log. And you don't have to do it. Cooking is the same thing. If there was any cooking quests in here that I had not done yet, they'll show up. My next one isn't till level 12, so I can't get it yet. Uh, this is for comfort settings, so this is locomotion, whether or not you want to snap turn, smooth turn, how you want to climb, if you want vignetting, um, things like that. I highly recommend going through all these settings if you are new to VR so you don't get sick flying around because it can be uh, quite nauseous, inducing if uh, you're not used to flying. Um, what else? Audio. This is where you can turn up sound effects. Voice volume. This is voice volume of other people in the game. Music volume. I don't I don't listen to music in the game, so I'm fine with that being off. Dialogue. This is NPCs talking to you, like Mika and things like that. And voice channel. You can have guild or global. So only people in your guild or everyone in the world can hear you, either one. You can't have them both. It's one or the other. And the exit button gives you some statistics, lets you log out or exit the game. And the tools button is for graphic presets. This is for the PCVR version. Grass density, we can crank that up. You can see this over here. A little bit of grass. Or crap loads of grass. Doesn't that look awesome? Ugh, I'm going to leave it at high. And then also from this... Uh, kind of selfie button. You can control the camera settings if you want to stream this or record yourself. Smooth first person takes away all of this nonsense so nobody can see all that. And third person adds this little thing, which is the camera. So you put this outside of your play space. Like there. And now you can see me. Um, and then you can follow me around, and we can fly through the world of Zenith, which is pretty damn cool. So I think that's uh, it for intro to Zenith. 
Um, if you think of anything else that you want me to teach or give you some tips and tricks on things, uh, let me know down in the comments. I'm uh, a founding backer from Kickstarter for Zenith, so I've been in all the alphas and all the betas. I've seen all the progression and quite familiar with the first you know, 30 levels of the game because I've done them repeatedly throughout the last couple of years. So if you need any help, write a comment down in the description, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and we will see you on our next video from Zenith. These are zip lines and they're all over the world to help you get to different locations, like on top of this giant rock. There's the tier right there that we're going for. You see all these little uh, like updrafts looks like, and that's exactly what they are. They replenish stamina and send you up but I need to go down. This is a long way, but it might work. Climbing also reduces stamina. So I find if you uh, kind of clip your feet into the rock, you can let go, which will help you rebuild stamina as you climb. <sighs> Famous last words, but here it goes nothing. did not send me up, but it did send me over. Here it is. I did it. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Yo, yeah, I'm sorry. Let me... Everyone deserves go. to have the best shot at their journey, yeah? <laughs> so I've turned on in-game audio just so we can see what it's like with all the people doing their things. These girls drop my bows and they are definitely more of a challenge. See the bent review bow. Ooh, and some noodles. Nice. Those are cooked noodles. I'm eating those suckers. Oh yeah. Plus 200 health regen. Chomp, chomp. Chest. All kinds of stuff, including a couple bows, so that's nice. You can use your wrist A button, and it tells me where my next quest is. It tells me side items, so I think this is a quest that I've already, or a box I've already opened down there. Keep an eye out for shiny things on the ground. So there's a world event here, you can see, marked by the reds. This, my quest is that way somehow. Let's see if I can get this way without pissing off those guys. Nice. Whew. And there you can see the big yellow beam is my quest. 
Should we be able to see that big yellow beam up there? Do, do, do. Oh, I remember this area. Oh, this is fun. I've been here in a long time. <laughs> Hello, city dweller. Hello, Hail, warrior. The forest devours the unprepared. Greetings, mm -hmm. cursed one. Eyes and ears open. And you have my hunting quests. Hey, get over here. Up for the challenge. Ah, oh, level 14. Farewell for now. Can't get those yet. I'm really not supposed to be here. Is what I'm gathering. Ah, oh, heavy foot. See? Lick this beam. There's my quest right there. It shows you that I have to put my hand in that little box because we're learning about these statues. So let's turn you around. Let's come up there. Yeah. Alright, we learned about one. Now, way in the distance, I can see one, two, three more uh, things. So now you, know you can see the beams for quests. That yellow beam. There's one way over there. One way, way, way over there. The uh, furthest one might not be viewable on a quest, but you can always look at your wrists. These three beams are those three icons. So this particular one I happen to know is inside a cave. And these guys are high level. So they're either gonna kick my butt. Look at that 14. Essence of wolf. Take that. I can't do that yet. Shit. Hit like a Mack truck. Look at my health. All right, that's two. Oh. Um, three and four that way. <gasps> Look at that. How the hell are you supposed to get that? Snagged it on the way by. No, let's not find out. <laughs> this is a great zip line. It's huge. It's huge. Look, there's more up there in the trees. Look at them all down here. That's like a quick way to get out. This one's heavily guarded because there's a world event right in front. So we're going to have to uh, get smart to go around. Because I'm doing this solo, it'll be a little uh, more tactile, tactical than just running out here and shooting things. I do want that. Come on. Come on. Mushrooms. Yes. I'm gonna need those for soup. Alright. I just had to get here. Now I have to go back. I visited all the monuments. Now I gotta get back up to that yellow beacon, which is back into that cave.
Can you hear that? It's an indicator that there's tears nearby. I'm gonna put these in my chest. Oh boy. No more tears. No more noise. Here we go. I did it. I'm the king of the flying. Hear that? Not that. The jingles. this. No more jingles. Fourteen. Damn, all right, well, I need to make some stuff anyway. Well, I think I'm going to end the stream here. Thanks, everybody, for uh, checking out the video. If you had any more questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below, and we will uh, be sure to answer them as best we can. If you need any help out in Zenith, by all means, look for the Q2C VS Virtual Strangers Guild, and we are more than, well, more than uh, happy to help you out in the world. This is just a quick shot of the city from high up on the skyscrapers um but yeah it was fun